Why do we fight? We're going to get to the bottom of our urge to fight. And at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you about a time where I fought with my own boss. And it wasn't well done. <laughs> I got two stories, in fact, where I failed both times and fell into fight instead of staying calm. Our need to fight is natural. It is a survival instinct that we fall into. And when we fall into it, it's because we're feeling attacked. We're feeling fearful. We're feeling stressed out. Something is hitting us and we feel the urge to be defensive and protect. That is why we fight. Verbal and physical fights occur when we feel like reason is no longer an option and we must attack the problem we're facing with something else. So if you're learning to recognize how to, when and when not to fight and when to stay calm, that's a good idea to be doing that. People with high EQ are able to master this. They're able to recognize now is not a time to engage my fight instinct. Now is a time to hold back and still converse and function. Once we fall into fight mode, we lose our higher brain function. We slip out of the ability to tap into the prefrontal cortex and we are now stuck in our survival reptilian brain, which is habitual in nature, which is going to take us to patterns and behaviors that are not necessarily nuanced and capable of adapting to changes in the situation. War is on. We're going for it. We become less adaptable. We become more focused on clear and defined answers and outcomes. Fighting with someone who is already in fight mode is really about who will destroy the other. It is not an effective method of resolving a concern. So if you feel yourself moving into fight mode, you might want to, if you want to salvage this relationship, step away. Give yourself some space and allow yourself to calm your emotional response so that you can meet this person with your mind, not your instinct. That is the only way to get through it without actually, you know, destroying another person, whether that be in a contractual agreement, contractual agreement, or whether that be in a relationship or in war, right? All of these things, we step away from fighting. If you're in war, man, you've, you're way past the point of having a conversation, right? So what do we do to get to that, to stay out of that? First of all, keep yourself calm. If you can't, step away and say, I'm going to come back when I can have this conversation with you. I'm actually going to give you an example of a really embarrassing time when I fought with my boss after I left a company. And he said he wanted to meet with me to discuss why I'd left and what were the reasons. And it seemed fairly benign information gathering like an HR type thing so they could understand maybe how they would have been able to keep me because there were reasons I left. When I met him, it immediately turned into a, I could tell, some sort of legal sleuth hunting where he was trying to figure out a way that he could come after me. And I felt attacked and I felt deceived and I felt like I was there under false pretense. And I felt my anger rising with each question that he answered. My response and my anger increased with each question that my boss, my old boss, asked me. So. I began to really think I should step away, but I didn't. I didn't take that moment and say, I got to get out of here. This is not a uh, productive conversation. I fell into fight mode and I just started chewing him out. And I told him why I left and I told him why I was angry and I told him all the things that I'd done and I stormed out of there mad without creating any, I was hoping honestly, with this conversation that we could resolve some of the issues and concerns that we had had and what he was facing and thinking was going on and what I was facing and doing business together would be something in our future because there was a potential for that. I walked away knowing, well, there's no business there. <laughs> I burned that bridge. And it was not something I was proud of. It was not something that I, I even had prepared by calling my brother and saying, hey, I'm going in this. And he told me, be calm. Don't lose your cool. Don't light up. And I still did. And I was so disappointed in myself because 
I had not taken those steps to act with control when I felt myself rising. There's that point of no return, right? Like when you go over Niagara Falls, they say, when you get to a point on a waterfall, there's a point where there's no paddling backwards. You're going over the waterfall. I saw that point coming, and rather than getting out of the water, I stayed in and I went over. So if this is you, forgive yourself. Recognize what happened. Identify the point when those emotions were building within you. And as you begin to see that process, you can identify, oh, I really need to step away when I get to this emotional state. That will build your emotional intelligence and allow you the capacity to act properly when you start to engage in that and slip into that space where you're fighting and not wanting to. So I also was able to do something that I felt actually pretty good about um, because my dad had done it. But even here, I didn't do it as well as I wish I had. This is a real personal story of my, as a, as a dad, I was with my kids outside, I was working in the garage and my two youngest were out playing. I think my son was maybe four and his younger sister was three. He was probably four and a half, she was three. And they were kind of just messing around in the dirt. And my daughter, who was younger, threw some rocks at my son, <laughs> whose response as a young, tough four-year boy was to turn around and throw a rock right back at her. He had a stronger arm. He had better aim. It was a bigger rock. And it hit her right here under her eye and almost split it open. It was this huge thing, and she comes running to me crying. Daddy, Lucas threw a rock at me. I didn't know any of the preceding stuff. I just saw my little girl with almost a split open cheekbone and my son who had thrown a rock at her. And I was angry. I was livid. Myself, as a little boy, I had thrown a rock at my older sister at the time, trying to hurt her because I was angry at her. I missed. I hit the tailgate of the um, camper that my dad was renting, or maybe we owned it, I don't remember. I, I hit the tailgate and blew the tailgate light out. My dad turned in anger and looked at me and said, who threw that rock? And I was like, oh my goodness. I broke the trailer and I said, I didn't mean to hit the trailer, dad. I was trying to hit my sister, I said my sister's name. I said, I'm trying to hit Becky. <laughs> and the moment I said that, I knew I had said the wrong thing. My dad had been hit with a rock in the forehead as a child that had almost killed him. It had bounced off a cliff, split his forehead open, and it almost killed him. So throwing rocks around my father was never a good idea. The moment I said that, I started running. I knew I was in trouble. And the beating that I got for doing that was significant. And it impressed upon me something that I think was good, not to ever physically harm a woman, no matter what. That was one of the lessons I learned, a good lesson. It also impressed upon me that anything that was done like this should be met with extreme physical retribution for having done it to stop that behavior in the future. And that's how I felt when my son came to me. All of that ignited in me that fight or flight, wah, here I come, no prefrontal cortex. Fortunately, I said to my son, what did you do? Who do you think you are? I was shaming him. Go to your room. I have no capacity to talk to you right now. I want to hit you too. I said these things to my little boy. And he went up to his room, terrified, and clearly feeling bad for what he had done to his sister. He could see the mark. He did not intend that. It was an instinctual move. He's just a little boy reacting. And now I had piled on him with, in my anger, a weight of something that he would go to his room with and just wonder at. At the age of four, cute little kid, right? I felt badly about that for years, and so did my son, until I was able to apologize to him for it later, after learning that that kind of behavior is unacceptable. Gladly, I did not hit him. I did not fall into fight or flight that far. I was able to recognize before I th threw down on my little boy where I was at and 
and separate myself to calm myself. And then I went and talked to him in a calm way and was able to get through that without ever creating a violent situation with my little boy. But this is the power of fight or flight. It takes you to habitual places. It makes you react in this situation. I reacted far greater than the situation warranted for my little boy. I did things in that that I regretted. Same with my boss. I acted in a way in fight that was not needed. If I could have recognized as it was building in both situations earlier, I could have simply said, I can't deal with this right now, son. I got to deal with Sunny. She's hurt. I'll talk to you later. And I could have just stayed loving and kind the whole way through. There was no need for the fight in this space. With my boss, I could have, rather than igniting, said, this is not going where I, where I feel it should have gone. This is not a helpful conversation for either of us. I need to leave. We can maybe talk on the phone when we both settle down. That could have changed the nature of my relationship with my old company. All of these things are possibilities if you learn how to step away from that instinct to fight as it builds on you. 90% of the time, we do not need it anymore. Not in the position we are in in this first world life that we lead. I hope that's the case for you in your home and everywhere around you. But in 90% of the time, I believe most of us are okay. So figure it out, move into it, Allow this to be a power that you use only in the times when it's absolutely needed. This is how I do it. I'm James. Thanks for joining me.